It's Ocean Drive in Coney Island. Ocean Drive is the only luxury rentals in New York with a spectacular ocean view. You wake up in the morning and breathe that ocean air. I'll certify that you're going to live 10 years longer. When I became successful, I wanted to live on the ocean. If you have worked hard, you deserve an apartment on Ocean Drive, too. Go to OceanDriveNYC.com and reward yourself. If you're a policeman, fireman, doctor, nurse, or teacher, you qualify for a limited-time offer at Ocean Drive NYC. C.com. Terms and conditions apply. Congressman Pete King, a uh, great guy, retired from Congress. And, uh, sir, you were there for many, many years. How are you, first of all? First, I'm doing great, Greg. I'm doing great. Now, how are you and your father doing and your mother? We are wonderful. Thank you very Good. much for asking. So uh, it looks to me like Joe is lying, but is there something to what he's saying here? Uh, what's happening? Uh, first of all, it's total hypocrisy. Secondly, uh, when he was running in 2020, he knew what the conditions were. Because this money that he's talking about was appropriated back in 2019. So he knew the money was there, and he said he was not going to allow one dollar to be spent for constructing the wall. So he was aware of it then, or he should have been aware of it then. Secondly, he uh, uh, has been in office now for almost three years, and he didn't construct anything at all with the walls. Like he made a point his first and second day in office to say he wasn't going to do it again. And uh, there's no way you can force a president to do something like this. For instance, the courts have told him that he can't be doing a student debt relief. He tries to find a way around that. You could, he could definitely uh, have held on this. Let, let the Republicans sue him in court. No, this is a total hypocrisy on his part. And they didn't get their act together. Because before the president made his statement, my office was being honest. He was saying the situation of the border was out of control. They had to do this to get control of the border. That's the reason it was done. And then when uh, Biden started getting flack from the left wing of his party, then he came up with the story, well, I had to do it. He didn't have to do it. There's any number of ways he could have avoided that. He could have pushed it off. He could have just denied it altogether. And uh, so this was uh, – he's trying to have it both ways. He's trying to appeal to some of the moderate Democrats – in uh, you know cities like uh, uh, Chicago and uh, New York, even though I don't consider certainly Chicago not to be a moderate, but you know Democratic people, Democratic voters in these cities, uh, and, and Los Angeles, San Francisco, that uh, uh, he's doing something. And at the same time, meanwhile, he can tell the AOCs in the world that I, you know, I didn't want to do it, but I have to do it. I mean, this is uh, uh, if what he was saying, if he thinks it's really true, then what a poor leader he is that he suddenly, after three years realizes he has to spend money for something that he's totally opposed to. So, no, this is hypocrisy in his intro. Hypocr- it, it, so it's it, when he says, I tried to get it out of the budget, but it's in there and it has to be spent in this way, that is a flat-out lie, correct? From all that I know, yes. To me, uh, the powers of the presidency, I'm not aware of him ever trying to get it out or making any concerted effort to get it out. Listen, he's a guy who controls both houses of Congress. He's a guy who uh, made a campaign pledge that he wasn't going to build a Twitter wall. He didn't do it for three years, and suddenly, when the situation is out of control, and it's, well, it's been out of control for a while, but increasingly out of control, storming across the border, raging, storming into uh, uh, Democratic cities, Democratic politicians are uh, in a panic, and then suddenly he says, I have to do this. He doesn't. No, it's untrue. Wow. Uh, you mentioned Mayorkas. Here he is. Uh, yeah, they put out, I think, a written statement saying, uh, yeah, we're going forward with the wall. It's great. And uh, and then after Biden said what he said, listen to this. Cut 12, please. DHS, Department of Homeland Security Secretary. Very weird guy. Bulgy eyes, always freaked out. Um, uh, Mayorkas, cut 12. I want to address today's reporting relating to a border wall and be absolutely clear. There is no new administration policy with respect to the border wall. Allow me to repeat that. There is no new administration policy with respect to the border wall. From day one, this administration has made clear that a border wall is not the answer. That remains our position, and our position has never wavered. The language in the Federal Register notice is being taken out of context, and it does not signify any change in policy whatsoever. All right. Uh, (laughs) That's a serious spin job. Uh, You can call it a policy. You can call it whatever you want. You can cite the Federal Registry, Registrar. But that that wall, construction will will, will resume. 
There's no getting around that, right? What was he doing right there? He, he just he said he was doing it. They are you know, continuing the uh, construction. And so now he's saying they're not continuing it on their own. I guess they're being forced to do it. I don't know what they're trying to say. They're trying to have it both ways. I mean, uh, unless, he, unless they are definitely backing off. I mean, who knows with Biden? I mean, I think when Mayor, and Sanders to Mayorkas, I hate to be fair to him, he did the right thing the night before, the day before, when he came to the realization, political realization, the legal uh, uh, realization that as uh, Homeland Security Secretary, he had to do more to fortify the border, to secure the border. So he did the right thing. And I'm sure he did that in, in uh, conjunction with you know, the Biden people. But then when they started to get flacked, yeah. then Biden walked away from it and left Mayorkas hanging out there by himself. Vacation starts with VA. One thing you'll love about your trip to Virginia is that you'll never have to settle for one thing. All that you love is all in one trip. Start yours at Virginia.org. Huh. Well, hey, when you were a congressman and you live on Long Island, uh, you probably took a lot of Amtrak. And uh, but halfway between D.C. and uh, New York is is Delaware, and Joe Biden famously rode the train. I don't think he rode it all the way to the moon like he was bragging about, but he was on the train, I guess. And you also were, you know, in Congress at the same time. Tell us about your experiences with him one-on-one. What What is he like? Actually, on Amtrak, I only saw him a few times. I got to know him uh, somewhat. The first time I met him was in uh, uh, my third month in Congress. The, the war was going on in the Balkans. And I think I was in Croatia. It was in Croatia. Yeah, I guess it was Croatia. And uh, I was with uh, two other members of Congress, and there was Joe Biden was down in the lobby. He came over, introduced himself, and uh, acting as if we'd been longtime, lifelong friends. And he went on about how important it was we had to stand against Serbia. I mean, it was this whole speech. And then when he came up in Congress a month later, he voted the opposite way. I mean, nobody really asked him. He came over to us and gave us his whole, his whole speech. And then, uh, again, the following month in uh, in the Senate, he, he did the complete opposite. Uh, <laughs> I, I would see him over the years. I mean, he was, he was an actually easy guy to get along with. He was at Alvin Mato's wedding. I saw him there. Uh, and I'd see him on different Irish events. And he would uh, uh, he always have the same joke. Ah, oh, your Irish grandfather. Father must be turning over in his grave, seeing that you're a you know, Republican instead of a Democrat. And he'd laugh. It was, uh, I mean, his I will say, he always had, like, saying things he didn't quite understand. But he did seem sharp at the same time. His eyes looked very sharp. The Joe Biden I see now is not the Joe Biden I knew then. Yeah, that vague look he has now, confused look. In the past, he wasn't confused. He was just, just the way he was. He was uh, you know, saying things that maybe he shouldn't have said. But he did know who you were. He did know what, he did know what was going on. Uh, so now he still has some of the goofiness of the past, <laughs> but none of the, uh, you know, none of the depth, none of the perception. And uh, also, I guess another thing that struck me about him, is that uh, people in politics, uh, it's uh, naturally you have respect for the office of president. So whether it was uh, Nixon with Eisenhower or whether it was, uh, 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 well, let's see, with uh, Obama and, uh, and, 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 and Biden. Gore. No. Yeah, but Clinton and Gore. Uh, uh, Gore would always say, you know, President Clinton, President Clinton. Uh, Dick Cheney would always say President Bush. Joe Biden, when he'd be speaking at an event, was always talking about his buddy Barack, Barack, Barack. He never called him president or Mr. President. And, I, and maybe it's a small thing, but it struck me as being unusual because I never heard a vice president talk about a president in public that way. It was always uh, almost incumbent upon the vice president to show that respect for the president. Well, and he, I just wanted to show yeah. that he was he was on the same level as Barack. No, I get it. Well, he thought he was better than Barack, actually, in some ways. like, And, you know, it's pretty weird. Joe Biden gets to the Senate in 1970. Three and uh, that in that in 1973, Barack Obama was 11 years old. No, 12 years old. 12. You know what I mean? That yeah. that, that had to kind of ruffle his feathers on some level. And he's the running mate to Barack Obama, who got there four years earlier. It's pretty insane. Um, by the way, when well, Bar- Biden, Biden was in the, in the Senate, what, 30 something years before he got it, 40 years, I guess. Yeah. And Barack years. Obama, 35 for, years, got yeah. it in four years. Yeah. Did you, and I guess you saw Obama when he was in the Senate and you were in the, uh, the house, right? That happened too, once or twice. Yeah, it did. Uh, I, I really only met him once when he was in the Senate and it was interesting. It was late, late afternoon and the sun was shining and, and you, know, you know, through the window in the, uh, first floor of the Capitol. I'm walking along. And Jesse Jackson Jr., there was a congressman, 
and he's walking along with the skinny guy. This is before Jesse says, Jackson Jr. went to jail, by the way. He yes, went to federal prison for accepting yeah. all kinds of weird, yes. all kinds of weird stuff. But keep going, sir. Yeah. So anyway, he's walking toward me with this tall, skinny guy with him, and he's, "Hey, when you meet a good friend of mine, he's going to be running for the Senate." Uh, and he gave the name, which was a strange-sounding name. And uh, he didn't seem to have a very strong handshake. I said, okay, fine. You know, good to meet you. So it shows what a poor talent scout I am. I, I spent like two seconds talking to Barack Obama. But I did see him uh, a number of times when he was president. He's very, uh, very cold. Yeah, uh, cold. Hey, you know what? A weak handshake. Well, nobody shakes hands anymore. Even I fist bump. But a weak handshake is usually a giveaway. You know, there's not always, yeah. but sometimes that something is up. Hey, Mr. Congressman, Congressman King, uh, we so appreciate your expert, uh, tease and, uh, gosh, these stories are great. Uh, let's do it more often. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Great. You got it. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, sir.